interval ratio data is where people often start to feel a little overwhelmed because they see the symbols and they get kind of scared. But let's not do that. Let's just think about this for a second. The first thing I want you to notice here is that everything here is based on sum of squares. So again, we're dealing with this idea of squared. Remember, I wrote this on an earlier side. We're just using y instead of x. No problem, same idea. So sum of squares is the idea of how a score deviates from the mean squared. And then you sum those. So I do that for every person. So I get the average for the sample. I subtract the average from a person's score. Then I square that. I do that for everyone in the sample. I add them all up. That gives me what is called the sum of squares. The sum of squares sets the foundation for all of the additional measures of dispersion or variability around the mean. So probably the most useful measure of variability around the mean is the standard deviation. And if you notice, it's kind of just the final step in the process. So we use sum of squares to calculate what is called variance. Now, this is population variance. This is lowercase sigma, kind of looks like an O, it's sigma, but lowercase. This is capital sigma, right here, capital sigma. It's the summation operator. This is lowercase sigma, right? This is lowercase sigma. It is a population variance when it's got a square and a population standard deviation when it doesn't. Please note that these, you know, capitalized or not capitalized Greek letters makes a big difference in what you're talking about. And, and try to get some sense of all of these. Commit them to memory like a new language, however you need to. But if you notice here then, this sum of squares value, right, is the numerator in your computation for variance. All you do is take the sum of squares and you divide it by, for a population, right, for the parameter. So for a parameter, what's the parameter? A population value, right? For the population, you divide by N, capital N, right? Population notation. For a statistic value, right? Which is what? Describing a sample. For a statistic, we divide by N minus one. And this comes to an idea that we'll talk about here in a second called degrees of freedom. Okay, so just hold that in the back of your head. But notice, all we do is this sum of squares, and then we simply divide by N minus one. Now, please note, when you have this vertical divisor, you need to solve the numerator and the denominator and then divide. It's not like a linear equation where you go through like, oh, well, n minus 1 goes last. No, 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 no. You do this, you do this, and then you divide. Okay, that's how you work vertical divisors. So in this case, we just take this number we already calculated and divide by n minus 1. So if you had 20 people, you divide by 19, and that gets you the sample variance. If you're doing the population variance, you take the number, which is calculated the same, and you divide by 20 instead of 19, because it'd be n, not n minus 1. So again, really, the math here isn't hard. So these all look like crazy equations, but it's a really simple step. Once you've done this, you just divide, right, by another number. Easy enough. How do we then take this and move it into a standard deviation? We simply apply a square root. So this square root turns a variance into a standard deviation. Notice the standard deviation just misses this square. You just knock it off. How do you knock off a square? You square root, okay? So it's, it's a really easy, like, one, two, three, right? The hardest math is here, but you can take sum of squares, you turn it into variance, how? By dividing. You take variance, you turn it into standard deviation, how? By square rooting. So really easy to, to get down here, even though this math looks complicated, okay? And... It, in Excel, in JASP, it's easy to get these numbers with just the click of a button, which you'll see in the videos. So what I want you to know is that these all relate to one another. You can go back and forth between them, right? If I can turn sum of squares into standard deviation, then I can flip the algebra and turn standard deviation into sum of squares. How would I do that? Well, first I would square the standard deviation, and that gets me back to the variance. Then what would I do? I would multiply by whatever I divided by. So for example, n for a population. I'd multiply by n, and that gets me back to sum of squares. So it's really easy to go interchange between these things, no problem. We'll do a little demo in Excel that hopefully helps to illustrate this point. This is not a command you need to be able to do, I'm just doing it for quick data. So I'm gonna make random numbers between zero and 100, and we're just gonna make a set of those. 
So here I've got 10 scores that I made. All right, so there I have 10 random numbers. So these numbers are what we would call our X values or our Y values, either way, they're the variable. So whatever these might represent, right? You have scores on a test, whatever it is, they are the scores. Each of these scores belongs to some given person, right? So I could, for example, say, okay, each of these belongs to a person. So I would represent the person they belong to. So, and these would simply be placeholders for the number that the person is in the data set, often called something like subject identifier or something like that. So these don't mean anything numeric. They're just the, the order of the people that I measured. So I measured 10 people, right? Measured 10 people who gave me 10 scores on variable X. I can then calculate, well, what is the average of my data? And the average is 45.2. So then I can say, get the deviations between X and X bar, which is the mean. And that's simply taking the score and subtracting the mean. That is called a deviation for every individual. And you see that some are above and some are below. So what happens if I don't square these and I just sum my deviations? I get zero. So this is exactly what I was telling you. We have to either get the absolute value or square. And with the mean, we're always gonna square the deviations, right? Because if you don't do that, you get a total variability or total error of zero, which is not accurate. So what I do is I take all these deviations and I'm gonna square them so to the power of two. So to do that, I'm just gonna take the score and square it. These are now all of my square deviations. The final step is I would sum these values. And this is my sum of square deviations. So right there, that number is SS. So if we take sum of squares and we divide by our sample size, which is what? How many people we have? So we have 10 people, right? So for a population variance, we would divide by 10. For a sample variance, we would divide by 10 minus one or nine. So we would do this divided by nine, right? So this is population variance. This is sample variance. To turn those into standard deviation, we just square root them. So if I square root this number, I get population standard deviation. If I square root this number, I get sample standard deviation. So you see that these numbers very easily derive from this first step, getting the sum of squares. Now, there are short ways to do this in Excel. I wanted to show you how the process works from a set of data on. But for example, we could check ourselves by using the command. Also use commands like equals var.p, which would be population variance, and just highlight my data. And look, it matches this value we got here. I can use standard devi dot p to get the population standard deviation and you'll notice that it matches the value we got right here so i'll write the command here this was d squared um so these get us these values this is just how we do it the long way but these commands get you there real fast you can also do the commands for variance with sample with dot s Notice how that matches here. And you can do the same thing with standard deviation. So there you go, that matches right here. So these are how we get all of these values from a set of data. And you'll notice that really the lift is simply getting from the data to the sum of squares. And then these are pretty easy. So why is the standard deviation such a useful, useful measure of dispersion? because the standard deviation is measured once again in the original units. So notice, if I was measuring height, 
the average height is in inches, if that's how I measured height, right? But once I square all the deviations, I'm now in, I got the sum of inches squared. Well, you don't measure height in inches squared, right? That doesn't make much sense. And notice that when I divide, I get the average, right? Because you divide by a count, a sum over a count makes an average. So variance is essentially the average deviation, but it's still what? Squared. But when I get rid of that square and I square root it, I now get the average deviation. So the standard deviation is the average distance from the mean to a score in the sample or a score in the population. It's the average distance between the average, or the mean, and a score. And so it's very useful and it's back in the original units of measure. So if I'm measuring height in inches, the standard deviation is going to be the number of inches the a score tends to be from the mean, right? So if it's three, you know, the average might be 67 inches, but on average, people are three inches away from that value. So that's why the standard deviation is a very useful measure of dispersion. Now, 